A six-year-old male presents with a lump in his groin. Physical exam reveals palpable and swollen left superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Fine needle aspiration of an enlarged lymph node shows malignant squamous cells. The malignant cells found with the fine needle aspiration most likely originated from which of the following sites? Now, this patient's findings of malignant squamous cells with enlarged superficial inguinal lymph nodes are going to be concerning of metastatic spread of cancer. The question is also testing our knowledge of the pectinal line, which is going to be this imaginary line that is going to be dividing the anal canal. Now this line is important because the area above and below this line is going to be different in iteration, in blood supply, as well as in drainage. And the reason for this is because the embryological origin of these two areas are going to be different. So above the pectinal line is going to be the hindgut, which is going to be derived from the endoderm. So I'm going to be writing END for endoderm. And below the pectinal line is going to be the skin, which is going to be derived from the ectoderm. So because these two areas are going to be different in their embryological origin, it makes sense that the innervation, the blood supply, and the drainage are all different for these two areas. Now, if a patient presented with hemorrhoids above the pectinal line, they will be presenting with a painless hemorrhoid. And the reason for this is because the area above the pectinal line is going to be innervated by visceral nerves. And these nerves are not going to transmit pain. Whereas the area below the pectinal line is going to be innervated by somatic nerves. And these nerves are going to be transmitting pain. So if a patient had hemorrhoids below the pectinal line, they would have a painful presentation. Now let's move on to the blood supply. The area above the pectinal line, so this is going to be the pectinal line, is going to be supplied by the superior rectal artery. And if we trace this artery, we can see that the superior rectal artery is going to be a branch of the inferior mesenteric artery. Now the area below the pectinal line is going to be supplied by the inferior rectal artery, and this artery is going to be a branch of the internal pudental artery. Now let's discuss the venous drainage. Now let's say that this is the pectinal line. The area above the pectinal line is going to be drained by the superior rectal vein, and this vein is going to be then draining into the inferior mesenteric vein, which is ultimately going to drain into the portal vein, and the portal vein is then going to drain into the liver. This is important because the liver is then going to detoxify the blood. Now the area below the pectinal line is going to be drained by the inferior rectal vein, and this vein is then going to drain into the internal pudental vein, and ultimately going to be draining into the inferior vena cava, which is then going to return the blood into the right atrium of the heart. Now, as you can see, the area below the pectinal line is going to be draining directly into the heart, whereas the area above the pectinal line is going to be draining directly into the liver. Now let's discuss lymph drainage. Let's say that this is the pectinal line. The area below the pectinal line is going to be draining into the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. And this should make sense because the area below the pectinal line is going to be closer to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. So it makes sense that the lymph drains into the superficial inguinal nodes below the pectinal line. Now, above the pectinal line, lymph is going to drain into the internal iliac nodes. And these nodes are going to be part of the pelvic lymph nodes. Now, our patient presented with enlarged superficial inguinal nodes. So his cancer must have been from below the pectinal line as a result. So because he had enlarged superficial inguinal lymph nodes, we're thinking that 
his cancer must have been below the pectinal line because if there is a mass below the pectinal line, then lymph would drain into the superficial inguinal lymph node. So it makes sense that the cancer would spread to the superficial inguinal lymph nodes first. Now the pathology is going to be different for these two areas. And the reason is again due to their embryological origin. Now because the area below the pectinal line is going to be the skin, and because the skin is made up of squamous cells, if there is a malignancy below the pectinal line, then we would have squamous cell carcinoma. And this is what the patient was presenting with. He had malignant squamous cells, and he also had enlarged superficial inguinal nodes. So we know that his cancer must have been below the pectinal line. Now above the pectinal line is going to be adenocarcinoma. This is going to be the pathology above the pectinal line. Now this should make sense because above the pectinal line is going to be the area that is going to be part of the rectum. And remember that colon cancer is adenocarcinoma and the reason for this is because we have glands in the colon that produce mucus in order to push the stool out of the intestines. And so if we have malignancy in those glands, then that will be adenocarcinoma. So to answer the question, the answer choice is going to be A, which is anus. So because we know that this patient's cancer was below the pectinal line, and because the anus is below the pectinal line, this is going to be the correct answer.